Hey, hey developers, let's talk about five steps that you can take to land that first web development job. Now these steps are steps that I found from Eric Elliott that he has a great article on it. So I'm gonna talk about it step by step. Also link to the article below so you guys can check it out. I think this will really help you out. Some of these things you may have heard of before. Some of these things you may not have. So I always like to hear about different perspectives and what different people think about how you can get your first web development job. And I think this will really help you out. And by the way, if you guys uh, stay all the way to the end, I have a special giveaway. Check it out. I'm gonna give away some things, so please stay all the way to the end. And if you like these videos, click that subscribe button and click that little bell button. That really helps me out. So let's begin. All right, so you can see here, here is the article. It's by Eric Elliott, it's how to land your first development job in five simple steps. So I'm bringing this up so you guys, for those of you that like to read, you can read this whole article. It's really good, it's really long. Um, but I'm gonna go over and just kind of generalize the different points he makes and just tell you a little bit what I think about these things too. So let's take a look. So at number one, his first step is to unpuff your resume. And I like this concept because we get so, as developers, or, or our resumes are so bloated, they're, they have so many things in them, but really you need to take your resume and to find what skills you really are good at and focus on those and the skills you aren't good at, you want to leave out. So he recommends that you kind of take all the skills that you have in your resume and you list them down and you put a scale from one to 10 on them. And if you have any ones that are five or below, you just leave them off your resume. And the reason you want to do that is because uh, if you're like a, uh, a hiring manager might be looking at your resume, if they see too many skills, it might look like you're trying to kind of puff up your resume when it's really not, um, you, you're really not as talented as you might uh, think you are in those things. And it also helps focus what you're really looking for and what you're interested in. So if you just put 10,000 different technologies on it, someone will realize those are probably not, you're probably not an expert on all of them and that uh, that will actually hurt you in the job process. So maybe focus on the ones you really are good at. And kind of that dovetails really well into practice until you can live code on the spot. So once you figure out those three or four skills you are good at, and so certainly if you're starting out web development, you need to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, is that you want to be able to live code that on the spot. So a lot of resumes or a lot of interviews nowadays, you're going to have to do either whiteboarding interviews, you're going to have to do take-home interviews, uh, take-home tests. Uh, a lot of times you're going to be on the spot and they're going to make you, they're going to ask you questions, they're going to maybe... Uh, make you tell them what you know and you're gonna be have to live code on the spot so he really recommends that you spend quite a few hours he actually says um, that you want to create more complex apps so you should be able to create larger projects with like user logins um, an app with a framework like react with redux or angular 2 is also popular um, something with ngx ngrx store if you're in the view side that would be like Vue.js and vuex would be another thing of it. He even links to an article where you can kind of get some more ideas about building apps. Uh, best case scenario, you need at least 1,320 hours of practice to really prepare for your first programming job. So that seems like a lot, but really uh, all the practice you can get in is, is important. So step number three is study up. In addition to being capable of building real apps, you're also going to need to impress your verbal interview and have a good understanding of some core fundamental programming concepts. Generally speaking, that means you're going to need to read some books and blog posts or watch some videos or take some courses, but don't study aimlessly. You should have a direction. Uh, so this is really a good idea. So you, you want to definitely study up. You're not, you want to be able to talk intelligently about the technologies and frameworks, things that you put down in your resume, the things that you may have just learned from your, your programming boot camp that you just went to or from your... Uh, schooling that you just took, or maybe just the personal projects that you, you've, you've learned in your own way. So make sure you study up on those things, spend a lot of time in, in there. I mean, the classic example is someone will ask you, what is a closer? You should not only know the definition, you should be able to list multiple use cases for closures and explain why they're useful. And even as a senior developer, we've, I've gotten asked that question. So that's a really good one. You shouldn't be able to, to answer what a closure is. So step number four is build a portfolio. We've heard about this really time and time again. Um, so you really need to, to try to demonstrate that you have a portfolio. It's more common that hiring managers expect the same of developers. Extremely helpful to us if we can glance through some code that you've ever written. Is your GitHub account full of learning projects and practice apps? Great. 
This gives us an indication that you were in terms of your skill development. If you don't have a GitHub account, you're going to have some troubles. Do you think you're the only person with a family, the only person who signed NDAs to companies and written code you're not allowed to share? So he's obviously saying, you know, if you already have a job, but you're thinking you can't share that code because of NDAs, you need to figure out ways to do it. And it's a big red flag if you don't have anything up somewhere that you can show what you've done. Um, I would go even further if you can create your own website. If you can uh, try to use your name as your website, that gives you a little bit of, of modicum that you understand, like basic technologies, how to get domain names, and then put up your portfolio there. Even if it's just test projects, uh, I would just try to put something up there of what you've done. Better yet, if you've done a little bit of freelancing, you can link to sites that you've worked on. Um, that's even better. And obviously don't make excuses that you don't have enough time. This is important. And number five is work on your people skills. So this is a really a skill that a lot of people um, don't think about a lot is, you know, the, the stereotype, the socially inept geek is played out. Those days are over. That doesn't mean you have to be an extrovert. What it does mean is that you have to need to treat people with respect of all times. You need to know how to make friends, collaborate, present yourself well. If you want to make a friend fast, learn to recognize and show gratitude for opportunity. And then practice empathy. Uh, empathy is something that you can practice when you're interacting with others, especially when you disagree. Make a conscious effort to put yourself in their shoes. And then uh, he mentions talking about creating a personal pitch, elevator pitch, understand your strengths, what sets you apart. You know, during interviews, you really need to want to show what you're good at, but also you want to be able to pitch yourself. And it's kind of a weird way to do it, but you, modesty isn't the best option when you're trying to look for a new job, especially when it's one of your you're trying to change careers or it's your first web development job you definitely want to play up your strengths um if you have a per if you have a personal brand you might as well own it shape it manage it what kind of person you want to be how would you like others to see you give it some thought write down a list of traits you want to be known for and then get busy developing and practicing those traits make sure they're visible every time you communicate with others so this is more of a kind of a general rule not just in interviews but in life itself i guess you just want to be able to kind of build on those strengths and be able to talk to people and and show them the strengths that you have so in conclusion unpuff your resume you're a junior dev with a passion for learning own it use it to your advantage um practice he talks about doing a thousand hours in coding exercise another 320 hours or so building real applications study read books online courses make sure you understand common interview questions you don't you it's pretty f common that if you just go to a lot of these sites that have common questions and learn them all, you might actually, you'll probably be asked some of those common questions. I mean, not all of them, but you probably will. Build a portfolio, it'll make a hiring manager question how seriously you take your development career or how passionate you are about programming. And don't make excuses. And then number five, develop people skills. Empathy is more important skill for software developers. Maybe the most important skill of life, practice concerning other people's perspective. You build more user-friendly apps and have better relations with your coworkers. So that is the five tips by this article by Eric Elliott. Uh, I really like it. So, you know, I, I think definitely these five things are important, especially the studying and building portfolio and even the empathy. I think these are all like really great ideas to, to keep in mind when you're trying to land that first development job. Um, it's not easy. Um, there's obviously a lot about persistence, a lot about trying to keep going, even though if you get rejected. But I think these are, are good building blocks of what to start with. So thanks everybody for watching. Uh, now we will go on and do our our uh, giveaway. So I did a last week, or actually last Wednesday, I said, I, and if you don't know, this is the top Udemy courses in 2018. I offered uh, a handful of people, if they left a comment and they subscribed and they shared, I was gonna give away some courses. So I'm gonna go ahead and give away two today. So I'm gonna just do, I already put it in here and do random. It's going to find it. Amount of new unique contents 15. I'm going to hit start. So the first winner will be Rodolfo. I started seven years ago. Okay. Rodolfo Raman. I'm going to find Rodolfo. Congrats. You win. Message me on YouTube or email me. My email is at uh, on my GitHub. All right, so hopefully Rodolfo 
will verify GitHub will verify with me and I will send him his information. Let's do one more. I'm going to uh, search again and we're going to just refresh it and I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to search again, start. And the second winner is Marcelo. Marcelo. Congrats, you win. Email me at my GitHub. Email me. Um, email me or message me on Facebook. Actually, on YouTube, my email is on my GitHub page. So that they can find it. All right, man, I got two. Actually, I was gonna give a couple more away, but I think I'm gonna wait until next video to do that. So if you guys wanna be, you know, actually what I'll do is I'll give away two more. So I'm giving away this uh, amazing course by Dylan, created a course on Angular 2. Uh, it's on Udemy, it's really awesome. All you need to do is three things. You need to click subscribe on this video. You also need to leave a comment and click that share button. And uh, that's it. So leave that out and I will randomly pick one or two people to get Dylan's course. So these two winners hopefully will get back to me. If you guys want to win, do the same thing. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Uh, adios.